Okay, I wanted to make a little video. I see a lot of people modding these little field and stream angler tins and pelican tins. So um, I've done a few things based on some videos and just kind of want to walk around and show you what I'm doing with one. Um, first of all, why did I get one of these? Um, with aluminum boats being popular, uh, tin boat nation and all that cool stuff. Um, and it is, that's really cool. Um, but for me, I wanted to be able to pull something small with my golf cart. Um, it had to be able to fit through a four foot wide gate without um, having to open it every time a pedestrian gate, which this does. Um, it's actually five foot opening. Um, and so I knew I had some size restrictions, so this works out real well for me. But anyway, onto the boat. Um, I bought the boat brand new. I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace. Um, had a bunch of them in the plastic, so brand new. I paid 500 bucks for it. So we'll start at the front and work our way back. Um, obviously, first of all, I decked it. I did a lower deck and not a high deck, like a lot of people do because uh, stability reasons. Um, I'm 48, so I'm, I'm not an old guy, but I'm not a young guy. And uh, so I wanted to be able to stand up some and sit some. Um, first thing you'll see is uh, Lawrence LMS 520. Um, it's an older one. It actually came on my 06 Stratus 201 when it was new, and I hadn't had it for a long time. Um, next thing is I added a switch panel here. Um, this does all the power, um, voltmeter. Um, it even runs the rigid LED light up front and then navigation lights as well. So everything is run for that through that panel um, with switches, uh, USB 12 volt uh, accessory, um, everything you could really want. One little panel I got off eBay, it was 20 something bucks. Um, next is some tool storage. Um, you know, the little rod holders actually double up real well if you wanna drop pliers or scissors in them. But I also did little magnets on the side. Um, I saw someone else that had done that before. So uh, <laughs> as I prove how well they stick, I miss. Uh, so I did that. And then in the other rod storage, uh, rod holder that you would use for trolling, I actually bored it out with a cup saw and put a cup holder in it. So um, that works out real well. Next thing, obviously put a hook in the front so I can tie it to the trailer, um, which I haven't finished. You'll see on this side, I do have some lights for the night fishing. Uh, so if I drop something, I can see it. Um, pretty basic. Now, one thing these boats are not known for is being good to foot control trolling motors. Uh, obviously, I wanted to do a foot control. Um, as a, a tournament bass guy and used to big boats, that was important to me. So um, with a foot control, it meant I had to work on a few things. Um, the mount was going to be the big deal. So, um, turn on all these lights so you actually see they work too. Um, I didn't have power on a minute ago. But yeah, so everything works. And then uh, with switches, you know, turn everything master back off. Pretty cool. But anyway, with, with the trolling motor, plastic boats aren't known for rigidity. So it's real tough to make one that, that will actually function well because as the motor torques the the boat flexes uh, that's just a plastic boat thing i have this about as rigid as you'll ever get one so let me tell you what i did first of all it's mounted to an aluminum door threshold so as you walk in your front door look down that's what that is so i marked it i cut it and then i put long threaded metal inserts into the boat Okay, one, two here, three back here. And then uh, I did some little threaded nut search down here. Um, once I had that on and put it on, got it working, it worked pretty well. One thing, it, it still had a little flex. So I went back and made a foot. So this is just a, a little plastic cup I had, uh, a long bolt, so there's a the head of the bolt on the bottom with a washer, then this plastic cup, another washer, another threaded bolt. Cinch them down super tight. Then the rest of the threaded comes up to another nut, and then I pinched two nuts together right there. So this is unbelievably strong. Now you're shaking the boat, not the motor. This is not gonna flex anymore. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, so foot pedal, still normal height. Typically I would recessed it. 
um, but not not a huge deal. I mean, I can drop it down a couple of inches with the, the decking, but um, not a huge deal. Uh, next to the foot pedal, you also see a button. So that is the remote for the rear motor. So I can hit that and access the power for the rear motor. I just leave it straight, leave it on high. It's a small one, it's only a 30 pound. Um, and in the front, um, it's a, a 40 pound. But uh, on a 10 foot boat, it moves it real well. All right, so come on back. Um, these boats are cool because I can be sitting and fishing and decide to stand up and literally just slide the, the chair back and it's out of my way. I keep a tote with a little bit of storage in here, miscellaneous crap. Um, I made rod holders, so a four rod on this side, it's plastic. I heated up the sides and bent them down and uh, then screwed them in, you know, heated this up, bent it down. Um, on the other side is a three uh, and I used L brackets on it. And these were just things I had laying around. I didn't even order these. This is just crap I had. And so I just decided to, to make it work. So anyway, I can bring seven rods, which is way more than you'll ever need in a 10 foot boat on a small reservoir. Uh, onto the back, last but not least, um, the battery. I do have a master switch here. Um, and this is just, you know, obviously take all power off the battery when you're not using it. Um, it's that easy. I have a little piece of braided fishing line, 20 pound uh, line that keeps it close by so I can't lose it. But uh, when it's back, you're ready to roll. That means you're done. Uh, if you look under the battery, um, you'll see how I wired it up. Uh, you'll notice only one wire on the positive and negative on the battery. Um, that is because I am working on finishing this up right now. On this side, you'll see I did little nut certs into the boat, into the plastic boat. Obviously, plastic's not a conductor. So the left side is all my powers that come together. Uh, that's the, the main power for the, the boat. Uh, that's the power that goes up front. That's the uh, LMS 520. <clears throat> that's the um, switch panel. All those together on the left. On the right is for the remote foot switch that uh, I think it's gorilla switch or whatever it's called a little stand on foot switch for the back motor. So basically that's just um, power out. Um, it goes in one side and, and hits the switch it goes back all the way to the front all the way back. So it's pretty simple. And then all my grounds are on the other side of the boat down here. Same thing. Um, so obviously, um, before you flame me, I know, hey, you got exposed power. Uh, isn't that dangerous? Um, hey, live on edge. If, that, if that's gonna kill you, you're pretty weak. I've had three heart surgeries and I made it. So don't be a sissy. Um, so anyway, uh, all this is like this because, hey, let's be real, things break. So if your trolling motor breaks, you don't have to dig everything up. I undo a, a bolt, pull a power, pull a ground. My trolling motor can be off here in about 30 seconds, not a huge deal. So uh, anyway, last but not least, the trailer. Um, this is a four by six trailer I got on Facebook Marketplace. Your normal, you know, little metal wall trailer. I cut the front of it off. Um, you'll see uh, two by 10 hidden back there painted black. Um, and then I just ran three two by sixes. You know, that's what it sits on. Three in a row on one side, three in a row on the other. Uh, this carpet you can get at Home Depot is 18 and a half bucks a roll. Indoor, outdoor, no backing. Most importantly, no backing. Some uh, 3M Super 77. Lay it, cut it with a razor blade, fold it, staple it, and uh, good to go, man. So, I mean, I have 250 bucks in the trailer. Get on the shady side. 250 bucks in the trailer. So, uh, all, all this stuff though I had from previous boats, stuff in my basement. So a $500 boat, $250 trailer, um, $100 battery, couple of trolling motors, miscellaneous stuff, LMS 520 that's been sitting in a box for 10 years probably. Um, so I mean, yeah, if you're gonna buy all the stuff new, it'd be more expensive than maybe it's worth. But for me, having all this stuff, um, I mean, honestly, I, I don't have a thousand bucks in the whole thing. I can pull it with a 36 volt easy go. Um, Big Booty Judy, my, my uh, 700 horsepower dually doesn't have to do nothing. Um, but this little easy go uh, with a 36 volt will climb the hills pulling it, no problem. It just thinks it's full of people. So a uh, little drop hitch on it. We're good to go, man. So anyway, feel free to comment. 
Uh, hey, I'm not saying it's the best one that's ever been built. I'm not saying it's better than a 10 boat. Uh, for the situation I have, I'm on Lake Walton in Monroe, Georgia, 200 acres. Um, this is as good of a one-man boat as you can ever want. Um, I do have a two-man fiberglass boat um, that I can actually put three or four people in, but uh, it's a little harder to get out and, and go through the gates and all the mess. So this is a five-minute hitch up, and I'm on the water. So anyway, appreciate you looking. Um, I'll be continuing to look at your videos, get more ideas from you guys, but I hope this helps. Thanks.